you're here today, we welcome you. If you hadn't been here in a couple of weeks, welcome back home. And we're in this study of Daniel. And the best way to find Daniel in the Old Testament is to go to the table of contents in the beginning of your book, Bible, okay? <laughs> Look up Daniel, one of those little small books, if you will, uh, compared to some of them, and just find what page. It's probably from the, I don't know, the seven to nine hundreds in your Bible, okay? And uh, find, find the book of Daniel, and uh, we'll, we've uh, walked with Daniel as, as he uh, became a, an exile, became a prisoner, and Nebuchadnezzar was trying to, in a very enticing and, and, and persuasive way, get them to follow his, their gods and their literature and their beliefs and their culture and their food. And Daniel said, just can't do that. And uh, he challenged uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the culture and stood up for what he felt like God wanted him to do. And you remember last week, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And he wanted all of his satraps and he wanted all of his astrologers and he wanted all of his people to come and interpret that dream. Not only interpret the dream, which is one thing, wanted him to tell the dream and tell him what I dreamed and tell me what it meant. And then there was an old exile named Daniel that could do that and that did that. And Daniel saved those astrologers. He saved those other interpreters and followed false gods and the other wise men and magicians of the day. And we, we make that point because now we see that Nebuchadnezzar has built this huge idol that he, every time the people of the area f heard the trumpet sounding and all the things and the music playing and all that, they had to bow down immediately and begin to worship this idol. Well, you know, the three amigos couldn't do that. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego couldn't do that. They couldn't bow down to it. And the very people that Daniel in chapter 2 saved, if you will, the hide that he saved, and that those very people turned on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we have this story, probably one of the more famous stories in the Bible, this story of the fiery furnace. If you grew up in the faith at all, you've heard of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. And how many were in the furnace? Four were in the furnace. And we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But it said, but there were some Jews whom you have set over. These people came to Nebuchadnezzar and said, we want you to know there are some Jews, some exiles from Judah whom you have set over the affairs of the province. Because remember when they were interpreting the dream, then Daniel rose in stature and rose in influence. And he said, well, don't forget about my three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they became uh, overseers, if you will, of, the, of some provinces of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they pay no attention to you. Now remember on a good day, Nebuchadnezzar was unstable. So now his... Men are coming to him and says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego pay no attention to you. O king, let's remind you who you are. O king, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. They're not doing anything. When the, when the sound is made, when, when the music is played, when the trumpets blare and all the, the, everything takes place, they pay no attention to your commands. They pay no attention to you, O king. Let's make it personal, right? They pay no attention to you, O king. Neither serve your gods nor worship the image of the gold that you have set up. At this, as you follow along in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar became furious. And the attacks began to come. We may make this point several times a day, but the attacks began to come. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were doing what they should be doing. Sometimes we're attacked for our faith because we're doing the right thing. Sometimes we're attacked for our faith because we do the right thing the wrong way. We'll see that in just a minute as well. Sometimes we're attacked because we're just dumb and we do dumb things. And then we even want to blame it on God sometimes. And he's like, dude, I had nothing to do with that. You were on you in the flesh when you made that decision. But sometimes attacks begin to come and they, be, they begin to come here. But when those attacks become often, instead of allowing and giving God time to do his work and allow truth to prevail in these situations, often we try to respond or often we do respond the way those attacks come to us instead of giving truth time to prevail. Because you know, the cream always does what? Rises to the top. It always rises to the top. And often if we are attacked, we, we respond back with an attack. 
Instead of allowing in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to reply to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. But I've been attacked, so I'm going to lash back at them. I've, they said something bad about me, so I'm going to spread something worse about them. They're threatening me, so I'm going to threaten them even more. And we'll get on Facebook and we'll just pipe along and we'll just do whatever our flesh wants to do. If you ever find yourself responding, even with your children, you remember that? Do you remember when you think, I'm fixing to wear your hide out, but I better take a break for just a few minutes. Let me cool off before I deal with you. Sometimes we need to just let God be God. Say, God, I need you to open doors for me. I need you to give me strategies. I need to, I'm, I, I'm not going to defend myself. I'm just God, just give me the wisdom to follow you and to respond to you. Galatians gives us a promise. It says, let us not become weary in doing good, for at a proper time we'll reap a what? A harvest. As we remain faithful, yes, if we remain consistent to the faith, We give truth time to prevail. If we remain faithful, even in the fiery furnace, even when we're being attacked, even in the situation that we find ourselves, if, if, now Nebuchadnezzar, you understand this one thing. If we are thrown into the blazing fire, the God we serve is able to save us from it and we will rescue us from his hands. So there, Nebuchadnezzar. However, if he doesn't, and he may not, sometimes you get in the fiery furnace and you get burned, and all of God's people that said, amen. amen. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes you do the right thing in the right way, and it still doesn't turn out well. And he, he says, if we're thrown into the blazing furnace and the God we serve is able to save us from it, he will rescue us from your hand. But if he does not, we want you to know, O oh king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Now, why would you find somebody, tell somebody crazy such, such, such as that? Now you're going to make him really mad, right? I mean, now you're going to get him really riled up. But I don't, I don't know about you, but I've never seen a fiery furnace. I mean, I don't go down to the entertainment district and say, well, there's a fiery furnace. We got, well, I mean, the towns don't have that on their town square, do they? What are you doing? Well, that's where we throw people in. I mean, we, we just don't have that in our world today. But we, we, we do perhaps have fiery furnaces. Sometimes you have lost a job. Because you did the right thing in the right way and it cost you your job. Sometimes you're found guilty in the court of society because you did the right thing, sometimes even in the right way, and there, there, there's a fiery furnace there. Sometimes there's broken relationships. There's broken marriages or broken relationships with moms and dads and children, and there's broken relationship with friendships. Because you did the right thing, sometimes even in the right way. But because you remain faithful, even if God does not rescue you, we will not serve your God. We will not worship what you're worshiping. And sometimes that causes us to break that relationship. And sometimes we're lied about. And sometimes we're falsely accused. Sometimes we're spoken evil of and trust is broken. Sometimes we're accused of doing things the wrong way when we've done it the right way. Sometimes we're accused for doing things the wrong way and we've done it the wrong way. But sometimes we can look around our world and say, you know, there is a fiery furnace. There, there is a fiery furnace. Sometimes we do the right thing and there's negative repercussions about it. Sometimes you can even preach the word that's just in black and white or even in the red letter edition. And man, you can get grilled for it because you just spoke the word that was right there. There wasn't any interpretation of that. It was just there. And people say all kinds of things about you, of how, how mean you are and self-centered and on and on and on. And I thought, wow, it's just, just 
It's just the Bible. Sometimes we live that Bible and people will say negative things and will try to hurt your reputation. So we probably don't go to a town square and see a fiery furnace, but when, when there is a fiery furnace in, in our world today, we, we can ask ourselves, will, will we remain faithful? And we'll remain faithful not to worship the God of the day, the modern thought of what is right or wrong. Will we, will we when we face that fiery furnace, even if it does cost us, we, will we remain faithful to serve the one and true God? And God is able to make grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Abound in every good work. It's got to be your drive. It's got to be your passion that I will not bow down to the world and to the false gods that people want to say this is right or this is wrong. I'll remain faithful to the God Jehovah whose son is Jesus. I was driving down the road this week and thinking, which is a dangerous thing for me to do. And I realized, being the ancient age that I am, is that I have never ridden down the road and thought, you know what? I'm going to pull over here and I'm going to get me some broccoli. <laughs> I've, never, I've never said, well, there's a Publix. Let me go in there and get some celery sticks. If I could just when I'm sleepy and I'm driving, if I could just get me a big old orange carrot, that would just tie me over till I got home. It, is it odd to y'all that we never, did, did any of y'all ever just crave asparagus when you're driving down the road? I mean, I, Lynn and I'll be driving down the road, I'll look on that sign and it'll have Dairy Queen. And something in me just like, oh, and I asked Lynn, I said, do you think they have blizzards? She said, right below that sign, it said that their, their, their blizzard machine is broken. They don't have those today. I say, let's try it. Maybe they've got it fixed by now. I can drive by a convenience store and, and I can just think Butterfinger, Mountain Dew. And they are in there every time I go in there. I just, maybe, maybe when I get to heaven, we'll be driving down the streets of gold and we'll just pluck some block broccoli and it will take good, taste good. And it, it will be, it'll just be so satisfying. And I don't know why, I, I guess it goes back to Adam and Eve. I don't know. I mean, it, just, just the sin of the world. The, it's kind of like when you're pulling weeds out in the in thorns and that kind of thing out in the yard. You think, way to go, Adam and Eve. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have this mess, you know, and Maybe it goes, I, I don't know, but I, I just thought, no, why, why, can't, why can't broccoli be my passion? Why can't asparagus and carrots be my passion? It's just not. And truth be known, it's not yours either. <laughs> you say, well, I like celery. No, not like you like a blizzard, you don't. <laughs> Come on, we're in church. We've got to be honest. But it, it, it does have to be our passion. Eve, even if I am thrown into the fiery furnace, I will not, no, it's my burning desire. I will not bow down to a false god, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where earth and rust and where thieves do not break in and steal. Now keep in mind, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego they had risen in the culture. They had risen in their authority. They were exiles, but now they were over provinces. They were in the hierarchy of the government. They were the royal family, if you will. But yet they still remain faithful. And just note that our earthly gains, our earthly gains should never surpass our heavenly rewards. No matter who you think you are, and I'm, I love it when E.V. Hill used to come speak to Southern Baptists, the old famous black preacher. He said, I love to speak to you Southern Baptists because of who you think you are. <laughs> I used to love that line. Sometimes if we think we're more highly than we all, think of ourselves more highly than it's because of our truth. Shadrach, and, listen, just because they were rising in social status didn't mean that they were not going to remain faithful to what God had taught them in their life. So even you, 
and your ability to influence other lives, don't bow down to a false God of what is right and what is wrong. You look in verse 17 and 18 that we just looked at and you can see the, how, how things were unfolding and they confronted Nebuchadnezzar in their life and as they confronted Nebuchadnezzar, it says, then, then Nebuchadnezzar was furious, it says, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And you may want to underline, it said, his attitude toward them changed. I mean, he, he was kind of respectful. He kind of appreciated them, you know, and in their, in their faithfulness in serving him and his kingdom. And, but his attitude toward him changed, and he ordered the furnace heated seven times. Sometimes, some people say as high as 3,000 Fahrenheit, seven times hotter than the usual, and commanded the strongest of the soldiers and armies to time up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. And there they were. For troubles that they had already prepared for in verses 17 and 18. So we make it our awareness, we make it our vow, we make it our understanding that we will not bow down to a false God and we prepare today for tomorrow's troubles. We establish in our spiritual DNA of what God desires for us and these troubles were coming, but they were, even if God doesn't save us, we will not bow down. We will not bow down to your God. James reminds us, consider it pure joy. My brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith will develop perseverance. I like what Rick Warren said. Rick Warren says that God has a purpose behind every problem. He has a purpose behind every problem. He uses circumstances to develop our character. That's what James teaches us. That's what he teaches us in our lives. So it's our perspective. So our perspective of walking through and being in that fiery furnace in our lives, that our perspective has got to be, I will remain faithful. Even though my social status might be rising, even though there's pressures on me to conform to what the world says is right or wrong, my perspective is that I'm going to follow God and I'm going to follow God and God alone. And how I do what I do and what I do in my life and the belief system that I have and what I say is right or believe in my heart of what is right and what is wrong, it, it's going it, it's, it's to come from God. Recently, Lynn and I were trying to think of some things to kind of gather the girls together and spend some family time together. And her, her idea was we could, we could go camping. The girls and the son-in-laws like to go camping. She kind of has this campfire in mind and this setting of a tent and that kind of thing. <laughs> that this would be a good family time. You smell like smoke. You wake up wet the next morning. You walk around and everything's wet and you try to start a fire. And I said, I would love to go camping. That's, this is my idea of camping. <laughs> Anytime you would like to go, honey, I'm, I'm with you. We'd have to sell our house to rent one of those, but still, I mean, we could go camping. Even, even when the girls were little, we used to live in Decatur. We lived by a place called Point Mallard, and there was a campground there. And we would set the tent up and get the fire going and do the s'mores and the marshmallows and all that kind of thing. And the girls would all get settled into bed. And I would slip out of that tent because we lived like half a mile from Point Mallard. <laughs> I said, I'll see you in the morning. And I'd go home in my warm bed. And early in the next morning, I'd go over there and fix breakfast and hang out with them. Lynn and I have a whole different perspective of what camping is about. <laughs> Mine at best is the Hampton Inn. She loves a tent. And the last time Lynn and I slept in a tent, we got this air mattress thing. Well, the next morning I was on the ground and she was like three feet up because <laughs> we had a hole in the mattress. 
There's nothing about it. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. We just, we just have a different perspective of what is fun. And sleeping on the hard ground is not fun to me. I mean, it's just, I love being outside. I just don't like sleeping on the ground. It's just not my idea of fun. It's just, it's just our perspective. We, we've got to prepare today. Yes, today, right now. Prepare for tomorrow's troubles because they're coming. They're coming for all of us, whether we're faithful or whether we make our own mistakes. And, but when they, when they do... We've got to implement God's truths. We've got to live it. Maybe a better way to say that. We, 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 so these men, they, they were wearing their robes, their trousers, their turbans, and, and other clothes. They were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. You, you've got to put it in. You've got, sometimes you're thrown into the fiery furnace, and the king's command was so urgent, and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers. And he, the, the guys that were throwing them in there died because the flames were so hot. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in there, and they were tied, and they, they fell into the blazing furnace. And you know how the story goes. Nebuchadnezzar wants to make sure this problem is solved, so he jumps up and looks into the furnace, and what does he see? And didn't you sigh these guys up? And you threw three in? He said, but I see what? Four. And one of them is, though he's the son of God, sons of God, he, he, he's an angel. I see four of men walking around the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of, of the gods. And aren't you encouraged? That God is always with us in the fiery furnace. You're not going to leave us. When Jesus said, I never leave you and I'll never forsake you, he's always with us in the fire. He's not, if we don't turn his back on it, he's not going to turn his back on us. Even when we're unfaithful, he's going to remain faithful. I see four men walking around unbound and unharmed. And then Nebuchadnezzar made the proclamation. Praise be to the God, capital G, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. Underline it, they trusted in him. Underline it, they defied the king's commands. Underline it, they were willing. They were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve or to worship any God, small g, except for their own God, capital G. They were willing to go against the flow and to remain faithful. When the fiery furnace came, when the difficult and the hard times came. Speaking of hard times, Elizabeth Elliot says, faith does not eliminate questions, but faith knows where to take them. Sometimes we say, if you're not having a difficult time, you're either getting out of one or there's one waiting on you. It's kind of true with a fiery furnace as well, is it not? It may be things we do in our life. It may be things that people do around us. It may be this changing world that we remain faithful to God's teaching and what God's Word says. But regardless, we prepare today for what's going to unfold tomorrow. Some of you are in a fiery furnace today. You just feel beat up and battered. May Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their God, found through Jesus Christ, give us comfort, give us strength, give us courage to remain faithful. But if we're not, we will be. As truth changes, what is right and wrong changes, the Word of God stands firm forever. And when we hang on to that, we're going to go against the flow. We're going to be called all kind of things, just in the quietness of our own faithfulness. Or even in our conversations, or what we approve or disapprove, or what we're a part of and what we're not a part of. The fire furnace is going to come. May we be found faithful. Amen? Amen. In his side. Let's pray together.